You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. Guess what? It is a Freaker Friday here in RLM land and Grammy land as well. We're kind of sort of in the same time warp. I don't know about time zone, but time warp at least. We're warped at least. Well, maybe just freaky. I don't know. Haven't decided yet. Oh, well, you're listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10. Also on the RLMRadio.xyz site, the RLM TuneIn Radio Station, the RLM Internet Radio Station, the RLM Spreaker Channel, which actually is RLM or uh, the World Truth Spreaker Channel, but it's still, it's the RLM Spreaker Channel. It just says World Truth on the thing, because, yeah, from way back. In any case, yeah, and if you're listening in on the Spreaker channel, come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. Give me some static. I'll give it back because, quite frankly, I got crap internet out here. (laughs) So if I can do this, anybody can. Trust me because all I do is sit here and blabber and give my opinion. And some people actually agree with me. That's what's scary. That's what's really scary. And then there's a lot of people that poke fun at me because, well, you know, I'm pokeable. Kind of like Pillsbury Toeboy, you know? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I just looked at my tummy, and I'm not going to make that <laughs> again. <laughs> oh, well, let's see, where else are we? Yeah, later on, we'll be on YouTube and BitChute and, and iHeartRadio, and oh, Lord, heaven help us, I'm going to be infecting the world. <laughs> and by the way, war is over. If you want it, and you know why that works out that way? Because the war that you see on the outside in your interactions with everybody else is the war you got going on inside. Think about that a minute. Uh, let me go see who all is playing. Over here on Fakey Book, I see Returning the Favor is back again. And, and uh, let's see. In favor of a law that requires all telemarketers to wear shock collars that can be activated by pressing the pound key. I'm in favor of that. I would love that. That would be one of those. (laughs) 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 Oh, excuse me. I was trying to hang up. Here, let me hang up. (laughs) (laughs) I'm naughty. But I would do that. Anybody over here on Facebook, yeah, if you would do that, say, hey, say, yeah, I would do that. Yeah. I most definitely would, because I'm kind of obnoxious like that. Okay, over here on uh, realliberty.org, it's kind of Facebook without all of the uh, BS. And actually, it really is. It's Facebook without all the BS. It's kind of fun over here. And now we have a shout box back again. Booyah! I see Grimmy is shouting over here. I also see Cowboy Tech is here, and Vinny was here just a little little bit ago, as well as late in again. I'm almost always late late in again i just i i don't know why it's like the universe says you're gonna leave five minutes early guess what i'm gonna put something in your road so that you get there either right on the dot (laughs) or like two minutes late never fails never fails except when i got do something for someone else and then i'm like 15 minutes early oh well go figure uh let's see yeah, Grim and Cowboy are over here. Hey there, everybody. How are you doing? Come on over to realliberty.org and uh, join in the conversations. There's an awful lot of really intelligent people over here. And uh, if you do, I'm Grammy Mary, by the way, or Grammy. You know, However, just come on over and say hi. Okay, moving along over here to Twitter. Man, Twitter has been going nuts. Um, yes. Um... Oh, I have, you know what, Brian Watts, I have that very same meme. It says, Dear GOP, don't assume it's just the Democrats. Yeah, I have one that says basically the same thing that says, We are tired of you, 
and your crap. The only problem is, and I saw a meme earlier today, you know, everybody says that Okasa oh, whatever the heck, the, the dits. <laughs> I'm just going to call her the dits because I can never remember her name because obviously I really don't give a shit. But, you know, everybody says how dumb she is. And I got to stop and think, you know, we get exactly what we deserve on some of these situations because, you know, y'all go and participate. And uh, if you really do believe that voting matters, you put her in there. So how smart does that make you? Not necessarily all of those that are listening, but, you know, everybody that's bitching about it. If you are in the district that put her in the position that she's in right now, Guess what? If you think she's dumb, we'll just leave it at that. Okay? Yeah. But, you know, I also did see something the other day about um, the uh, least edumacated states. And California is right up there at number one. It's got the most amount of people that haven't gone past ninth grade, which that doesn't necessarily, you know, because schooling, schooling always gets in the way of your education. But, um... Yeah, that's, and then that it makes perfect sense when you think of like San Fran Nan and how she's been in there forever. You've got to have a buttload of very uneducated people to keep putting that back in there. Wow. Wow. And yet, I'm in the great state of Kansas ass <laughs> where we have our own little doozies. Let me tell you, like Sam... Sam Brownback. Yeah, that's an appropriate name. <laughs> if you think of it in a weird kind of off-kilter, sick and demented kind of way. Kind of like Brokeback, only different. But I never did like him. And uh, let's see, who else have we had from... Um, yeah, we had another governor that went to... Uh, what the heck was her name? Sibelius, yeah, Kathleen Sibelius. Oh, that's another dumb hanger or humdinger, however you want to put that one. Yeehaw, yeah, we got our own uh, nuts around here. We'll just leave it at that, okay? So, hey there, everybody over on Twitter. I do have more followers. I'm up to 575 now. Holy crap. That's kind of scary. <laughs> and yet funny. And yet, and yet but my roads yeah um what was that i saw earlier today something about yeah pretty much lets you know just um how worthwhile the government is when you know they threaten it's gonna be a government shutdown gonna be a government shutdown when it finally happens the national parks are closed that's pretty much what happens the national parks get closed so you basically get told you can't go walking in nature you know something that's national like public owned you you can't go there anymore. Wow. <laughs> well, that government shutdown really hurt me. <laughs> I don't know about you, but oh well. Moving along. I'm just, I'm having a good time. I, c basically because I have no freaking clue what I'm going to do tonight because I was a slacker today. I really was. I tended to my pet duties and some other things. You know, duty, heavy on the duty. Yeah, and uh, got a couple other little chores done around the house, and then I set up my Roku on the TV because my Apple TV that's like forever old is finally kicking the bucket, and I broke down, and I bought a Roku, and so I was, I've been playing with it, and sitting on the couch and having two cats sit on me, and so therefore I took a nap as well, because, you know, naps are wasted on the young. Um... That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, over here on this Freedoms Network, effin' site, the most effin' awesome site ever, ever. Come on over. Join up. There's lots of people over here. Um, I see Grimmy is over here right now. Thank you, Grim, for letting everybody know that I'm live and in place. And also, let's see who else is. Well, I'm the only one online right now, but Bob Brenner was on for a little bit, as well as Cowboy Tech and Chris of the Family Masters. Family masters. I don't want to know what you're masters of, hun. I don't want to know. You need 50 more for 666, Vinny. Wow. How cool is that? Yes, Grimmy, Kansas has mixed nuts. <laughs> 
Yeah, we we got an awful lot of oats going on. A lot of people sowing wild oats where they shouldn't be sowing. Let's just put it that way, right? Um, oh, somebody peed in Sock Puppet's Cheerios. I hate when that happens. Don't do that to Cheerios. I like making peanut butter Cheerio bars. Oh, wait. Do I have... I don't have any Cheerios to do that. I have peanut butter. Guess I'll have to muddle along. Um... 600 and <laughs> yeah Vinny has 616 people following him around and guess what they're going to get a surprise because Vinny goes outside to go to the bathroom <laughs> hey Vinny I just said that live on the air <laughs> you better take some toilet paper with you and take take you a screen too because there might be some people actually wanting to start following you now You'd be in trouble, dude. Space Wolf is over here in the chat. Okay, I got to finish saying hey to everybody. I know, Rascal, your help. Rascal is so spoiled because she's been on my lap most of the day, and so now she thinks she still needs to be on my lap. What the heck? What the heck, Kit Kat? Um, okay, uh, Mines. I think that's the only one I need to go to yet. Over here on Mines. Hey, everybody. And I did see this thing about Emma Watson. Feminism. Because rich white girls need to feel oppressed, too. Yeah. Apparently, Emma Watson is famous for her performances in Harry Potter film series, which, yes, she was Hermione Granger. And, uh, my granddaughter wanted to be Hermione Granger for a while there, and then she decided she wanted to be the, the blonde lady at Trans-Siberian Orchestra, and then she decided she wanted to be a violinist, and now she's not any of those things. She's just herself, and that's awesome. But moving along, um, apparently she earned $60 million in those movies. And they're famous all over the world. And as of 2018, her net worth is roughly $80 million. Oh, how oppressed she must feel. Wow. Well, I don't know if Emma is a feminist or not, but she's a cute little thing. No, my gate don't swing that way. I just recognize cute when I see it. If I knew her personally, she may not be quite so cute, or she may even be cuter. Because I'm one of those weird people that, you know, what you look like, that's that's an initial kind of thing. But as I get to know you, that that decides how attractive you are. Some people may be very pleasing to look at, but are very, very ugly. And then there are some people that are not so gorgeous. You know, the wrapper isn't exactly all put together very well, but they are absolutely beautiful on the inside, and that radiates out. So, you know, I, I have a hard time, you know, just passing judgment on the external, because that is just the wrapping, after all. Okay, let me see. Vinny! Vinny, I see you over here on uh, realliberty.org. I also see Jim's Lighthouse has joined in over here as well. Cool. Thanks, Vinny. You're such a cutie. Okay, so moving along. Let me see. Where do I want to go first? I've, I did throw a few things in my pocket, and then there were a few times where, okay, we're just going to go here because faker, faker, belly acre. Um... I've been seeing it and for like several days now, and uh, it's time. It's time just to get it out of my system because apparently the universe keeps thinking that I just need to go there since it keeps putting it in my face. So this is from TruePundit.com. CNN's Journalist of the Year committed journalistic fraud on a grand scale. Are we shocked? Are we amazed? Are we appalled? I did not change my name to Paul. I really don't care to be a Paul, but yeah, I'm not one bit shocked. Not one bit. Um, Vinny, have you? Well, you're not the Pope, hon. <laughs> oh, you know what? I forgot to say hey to everybody over here in the chat. I proud to do that before I get to that true pundit thing and the faker, faker, belly acre. We'll just get over here to those people that is real. They's down to earth. And they have real conversations. And you know what else? They have real arguments cybernetically. But still, uh-oh. Moosey just got tackled. Sock, play nice. <laughs> Am I sapiosexual? Uh, I don't know what that means, Grim. Other than 
A lot of times, what does that mean? One who finds the contents of someone else's mind to be their most attractive. Yes. Above and before the physical characteristics. Yes. Yes, I am, Grim. Intelligence is sexy. Sense of humor is extremely sexy. Sark, the ability to use sarcasm properly, which I have trouble with from time to time, but I have fun with it in any case. Uh, yeah, that's extremely sexy, so... But, you know, uh, sexy is just, uh, you know, that, that, that too goes away after a while from what I'm told. <laughs> but I do find that very attractive. Yes, very attractive. Um, okay, so over here in the RLM, uh, it's squirrel. I see Barman right up top, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. I also see Cowboy Tech is following close behind, going, hey, dude, where's my beverage? I ordered it a half hour ago. Forget your tip, dude. Um, but Cowboy's always hearing pleasant voices. I also see Grimner, who is the RLM god, don't you know? And he's closely followed by the lovely Moose Goyle. And they're going to be on later on this evening for the Freakers Ball. It's going to be their Christmas edition, or as Grimmy would put it, his Bah Humbug edition. I hope you enjoyed the two uh, requests I put in. There was one other request I was going to put in, but then Squirrel... <laughs> I saw something shiny and it just left the building. Um, in any case, uh, I also see the lovely uh, Kate is here. Hey, Kate, I am so glad you survived the torrentials and the ickies. And you too, Sock. I'm really glad you you have survived all of the... <laughs> That's true, Sock. Sexy isn't just the hee hee. So, yeah. I agree with you there. Um, yeah. Attractive does fit better, though, because there are some people that are very, very just attractive in ways that you just plain can't describe. And yet, yeah. Um, oh, well, mo that's just Moose. She can't help it. Oh, two dead people have been found dead at the graveyard tonight. Wow, Poxophone. Thanks for that news at all is it film at 11 oh okay <laughs> i don't want to know vinny vinny's being weird in the chat y'all need to come over and check out the real liberty media chat because damn things are getting crazy uh, I also see Asmo is here, as well as at least Cycles is logged in. Hey, Cycles, how you doing, hon? Happy Chrissy to you, sweetheart. Um, I also see the lovely Chloe is logged in, as well as yours truly. Meister Brower is here. How you doing with your new pup, hon, your, or your foster pup? I hope, I hope you get along so well that he becomes your forever pup. That would that would be a cool thing. I also see a couple of poxes in the box. We got a poxified and a poxophone, as well as the lovely rain is logged in. And looky there, what? You're so sexy it hurts. Well, honey, you're supposed to use some kind of lubrication. Ha! Oh, ba dum boom boom. Um. <laughs> Moving along, RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel, is also here, as well as Rob Boykes. Hey, Rob, how you doing? Where's that bubbler, hon? I don't see the bubbler. I need my bubbles. I also see Rome's is here. When in Rome's. <laughs> Moving along, Space Wolf. Oh, I got to do this right. Space Wolf. Don't you love my sound effects? They're really expensive. <laughs> I've grown rather attached to him, at least. Vinny is also here, as well as Phantom. Thank you, Phantom, for my wonderful intro. You you are the bomb, dude. I also see Beetle. Hey, Beetle. Beetle, 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 Beetle. Cyborg Noodle. May you be touched by a cyborgian noodliness. By the way, Pastafarian Holy Day on Friday. Every Friday. Every Friday. Uh, I also see Dakota is here from the Great White Nort, as well as Frumpy and Gromit. And looky there, Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is in the chat, as well as JJ's, who was sharing pictures of his meal earlier today on Twitter. I thought people just did that on Facebook. <laughs> It looked very yummy, and JJ's let me know that, yes, it was. And it's like, damn, dude. Ow. Ow. 
Okay, Rascal is obviously so content with where she's at that she's starting to need the bread dough, and that means getting the claws involved. Ow. I feel like a pincushion. I also see Kozu is here. Hey, Kozu, as well as Ninsan Dubois. I love saying that name, Ninsan Dubois. It's so, it's so Dubois-ish. <laughs> Poxy Home is also here, as well as Papa Papa Pawn Sauce. And looky there, Sock Puppet, who's been feeling frisky in the chat room. He's been having all kinds of interactions with people. We'll just put it at that, shall we? And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the former f bombinator, just kind of loiterer now, is Skittle. Ah, I love you, Cyborg Noodle. You're so awesome. Okay. That's over here in the RLM. Let me see who's in the red pill that's not in the RLM. I see Apostle is over here as well as the lovely Beth Z. Uh, F. Canella. Uh, Juan Taco is here as well as KD Troxel. Uh, Polly, Polly Wanag. Polly Wanag? Really? Uh, mm, I'm sure I said that wrong. Sorry, hon. QFTW and uh, Soily are also in the red pill. So, hey there. Hi there. Ho there. It's a play on word. Oh, okay. Um, oh, that you want to punch in the face? Wow, don't be. Don't be. Nah. <laughs> I don't know that I want to. Hmm. It's Cajun thing. Oh, Ninsan Dubois. It's, it's very exotic. <laughs> okay, at least for a country hick like me. Hmm. And you know what? Hick is not necessarily a bad thing because we got an awful lot of down home, get you through the tough spots wisdom going on out here. So being a hick is just a bad thing to those people that don't understand what all of us hicks know. Just saying. Okay, I had to have a sip of coffee. Now, back to the article that I went squirrel with. I get flashers. What's going on? Tis the season to be wheezing. Oh, no, it's not fall anymore, is it? Um, Anybody hear banjos playing? Okay, so CNN journalists... Uh, of the year commits journalistic fraud, which does not surprise me one damn bit. But <clears throat> the German magazine Der Spiegel revealed Wednesday that one of its top award-winning journalists fabricated many of his articles, inventing characters, sources, and their quotes on a grand scale for many years. Klaus uh, Relochus I'm sure I butchered that one. Circle, you can give me static about it later. Apparently, he's a reporter and editor admitted to fabricating parts of at least 14 stories following the magazine's internal investigation. Now, the publication said that the issue marks a low point in the 70-year history of Der Spiegel. I am sick, and I need to get help, he reportedly told the magazine. Yeah, honey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? You're sick. Because, wow, oh, I don't have time to get into it. And I don't have one of those lovely little diploma thingies on the wall that basically is only good for toilet paper, but <clears throat> some people like to put them in frames. Uh, yeah, honey, you're sick, but yeah. Apparently, the reporter contributed around 60 articles to Der Spiegel, one of the leading German magazines for in investigative reporting. And he previously worked for other publications in Europe and won such awards as CNN Journalist of the Year in 2014. Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Damn. Get that out of there. Now, the fabricated articles include a phone interview with the parents of a free agent NFL player, Colin Kaepernick, and the story about an American woman who claims to have volunteered to witness the executions of death row inmates. Well, hmm. Uh, he also drew the fury of locals in Fergus Falls, Minnesota, after spending three weeks in the town and fabricating facts characters and quotes from people in an effort to portray the town in a negative light. Whoa, 
Wait, would someone that would be employed by CNN do such a thing? Now, actually, that was just a little tidbit thing. And it had a link at the end that took me to phone news. Hmm. So, let me get to past. Okay. So, what happened, <clears throat> excuse me, is beyond what I could have ever imagined. An article titled, Where They Pray for Trump on Sundays, and Endless Pages of an Insulting, if Not Hilarious Excuse for Journalism. Well, so what happened is beyond what I could have ever imagined. It's an article titled, Where They Pray for Trump on Sundays. Okay, I already read that part. Hmm. Apparently that was, uh, okay, that little blurb right there was written by Michelle Anderson and Jake Crone, who investigated uh, his Der Spiegel article about the town. Now, both Anderson and Crone uh, went to, or went on to reveal that the article contained or doesn't contain any truth except the town's population, the average temperature, and the names of the businesses or public figures. In other words, he had one hell of a good time creatively editing. We'll just put it like that. Now, nearly everything else, including the coal plant employee named Neil Becker, who doesn't actually exist, exist or quotes from the restaurant employee who was falsely called uh, the owner of a restaurant and whose son was given a fictional illness, all of that was made up. Well, you know, creative license. When when you're told that you can be a journalist these days, that gives you carte blanche when it comes to the creative license shit. Now, Relochus, or however you pronounce that, uh, there were, or his work was first called into question in November after another reporter for the magazine worked with him on a story about a border militia in Arizona. Now, the reporter found that the supposed interviews never happened. The case resembles past instances where journalists have been caught fabricating stories, and those accused previously have included Stephen Glass, who was fired from the New Republic magazine, Jason Blair, fired from the New York Times, and Janet Cook, a Washington Post reporter whose story about a child addicted to heroin won a Pulitzer Prize before it was revealed to be a fabrication. Now, no, fabrication is lie a.k.a. fake news. Fake news. Wow. And you know what? People are surprised by this. I'm not. I don't trust a damn... There isn't a single mainstream media news agency out there that I actually trust to uh, tell me the truth. Um... Oh, good one, Rob Works. Journalism is printing what someone else does not want printed. Everything else is public relations from George Orwell. Yeah, that's a good one, Rob Works. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, let's see. Who's so successful? <laughs> um, okay. Well, that's true, Grim. Okay, I'm catching up on the chat. And, Gr and Grimmy says, ain't nothing wrong with being a hit. Cousins need loving, too. Yes, they do, hon. Yes, they do. <laughs> oh, I'm feared. I'm feared. I have cut. You know, actually, we had a family reunion where, where we laughed our butts off. This has been years and years and years ago. Because we had... Um, stepkids in one family that had a crush on stepkids in another family so they weren't technically related by blood but so by the end of the the uh, family reunion when I don't know if I yeah by the end of the family reunion we were all going how do you know you're redneck and then we'd look at them and they'd get all red and say oh shut up you know because that's always the ultimate comeback oh shut up <laughs> And you know what? All these years later, we have not let them live it down. Why? Because that's what families do. 
<laughs> oh, we still love them. And yeah, actually, those two are both happily married uh, to someone else. <laughs> have families of their own, but it, it's really pretty, it was pretty cute at the time. We had a lot of fun with that. So, uh, shock, shock, shock. So, let me see here. I got to find there. Yeah, we'll do that one too. I'm talking about my little emojis over here on Freedom's Network effin site, that effin site. What's going on? Ooh, ooh, I got two more. Two more notifications over here on, um, uh, <laughs> I just saw, um, hi Ranchero, Ranchero42 over here on Twitter, and Vinny over here on Twitter, I see you, um, scrolling, 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 keep that cursor rolling, Grammy, oh dang, I thought that was a girl for a minute there. Never mind. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about Michelle Obama either. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go to my pocket real quick because I do have some things in there that were actually kind of sort of, um, I thought, interesting. So, like this one. Uh, sock puppet, honey. Or not sock puppet. Yeah, wrong person. JJ's. JJ's, no, 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 JJ's, dude, Jabberwocky on Twitter, hun, you really need to do something about these people over there in Scotland, hun, flash them or something, this is also from the True Pundit, Scottish Parliament bans the gingerbread man, it's now the gingerbread person, <laughs> Somebody apparently told the Knickernotters that they could make decisions again. Oh, that was not a smart move. Um, <clears throat> so, if you've ever been offended by a cookie, you're not alone. <laughs> Only way I get offended by a cookie is if somebody's got scrumdiddlyumptious cookies and I don't get one. Then I get off-ended. But other than that, it's like, it's a cookie. Really? Seriously? Oh, well. In order to avoid claims of sexism... The Scottish Parliament has decided to rename gingerbread men to gingerbread persons in its coffee shop in Holyrood. And the one, uh, one pound 45 pence, is that how you say that over there? I don't know. Um, 1.45. It's an iced sweet treat on sale ahead of Christmas featured a tag with the handwritten title gingerbread person. <laughs> oh man y'all you know the only way that you could tell the difference in stick people is if it had a little triangle down from you know like about halfway down and it went down like halfway on the legs that way you know that stick person was a girl that's the only way you could tell same with a gingerbread man only way you can tell the difference is if you draw a skirt on it what the hell crazy people. Apparently, Holyrood, Scotland, where the Parliament is located, recently learned through research that 30% of female ministers had experienced some form of sexual harassment. 30% of them. Some form. Please define sexual harassment for me before I get all bound up on this. It was when it was deemed necessary to change the classic gingerbread man to a less offensive non-binary character. <laughs> yeah, like the thing I saw earlier today that all I saw was a headline and I went, I'm not even going there. But the headline said, millennial parents are now calling their newborns babies. Not babies. Babies. What the hell? Baby is a non-gender term and yet apparently that's not good enough because it has some kind of connotation to it so now we have to call them babies wow these are the people that are supposedly going to be taking care of us in our dotage i hope to god i don't reach my dotage if that's what's going to happen wow 
Mm. In any case, back to this article of equal. Oh. Apparently, the traditional or uh, festive favorite with children, Hollywood would now stock gingerbread persons as part of an increased focus on gender neutrality. That's according to the Irish Post. You know what? If you really want to focus on gender neutrality, stop acknowledging someone's gender. Be neutral about it. They go just like this whole first female senator from such and such, first black female senator from such and such, first African, first this, first that. How about we just say, guess what? They're a politician. Pretty much covers all bases, don't it? First female, first male, first yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, to all of you out there, I saw this link earlier today too. Boys do not have periods. Sorry. And if you want to shove a tampon up your backside, well, d mm, you got some serious issues. Uh, but boys do not flow. They do not. They just do not. So stop teaching that to children, you nimrods. Apparently that's another school that is teaching children that, <clears throat> wow, it's, they, they live among us. They do. Apparently, to go on with this article, unfortunately the rebrand did not go over well. No. Really? I'm shocked. There's a read more at the end of this, so you can bet your sweet ass I'm going to be moving on to another article, or at least to another site. So, apparently Annie Wells, who's a Scottish conservative equality spokesperson, was not pleased. Sp oh, spokesman. Uh -huh. I inserted a general, gender neutral when there wasn't one. Ah, it's infecting my brain. So, let me read this over again properly, shall we? Annie Wells, who's the Scottish Conservative Equality Spokesman, was not pleased. Surely the Scottish Parliament has better things to do than to worry about what I call gingerbread men. This is an utter pointless gesture which simply trivializes the real issues of gender equality. <sighs> okay. Genders are not equal. I don't know if anybody told you that or not, but someone really needs to. They really do. There are some things that just genetically, biologically, physically, and emotionally, some things women are, for the most part, better at than men. One of them is like shelling out a kid. And... There's some things that men are just better at than women. What's wrong with that? There is a reason for that in the grand design of things. Why are you saying we must be equal in every way? I'm sorry, but if you're going to make me stand up in a bathroom to piss in a urinal, you're going to have a mess. And I'm going to have to go home and change my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. So just stop it already. Stop with this freaking gender equality crap. It's just another thing to get your knickers in a knot. Or for those of you that are thong wearers, wow, uh, let's hope that knot is placed strategically so that you get a, a little tickle out of the deal. Because if it gets moved up or down just a little bit, it's not going to be a pleasant thing for when you're sitting. All you knicker knotters out there. Dang, that was a ding. Let me move that volume down just a little bit. Thank you very little. So, oh, okay. Come out on the dailywire.com. Well, <laughs> okay. Hmm. Let me move along and see where where it where it quit so I can Oh. Oh, okay. So, Ricky uh Gervas also said some or some blah, 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 also said something to say or had something to say on the matter. Why are they all ginger? That's racist. Well, yeah. And ginger implies red hair. I don't see any red hair on any of them gingerbread persons that you got pictured here. Damn it. Oh, well. 
Apparently, this is not the first time this year that a company had to rebrand its products to avoid being labeled sexist. Ay. In October, Waitrose, which is a British supermarket, came under fire for the title of one of its sandwiches. It's a gentleman's smoked chicken <laughs> Caesar roll. Wow, a gentleman's smoked chicken Caesar roll. I wonder if maybe that's just... Because, you know, those Brits, they have kind of a wonky sense of humor. Have you ever watched any Monty Python? Mm, or Benny Hill? Yeah, they got a little bit of a wonky sense of humor. Apparently, the uh, name of the sandwich comes from the anchovy paste inside it, <laughs> known as Gentleman's Relish. Okay, peeps. You you should get the innuendo there. If you don't, well, don't ask me to explain it because I won't be able to without blowing coffee all over the place. I'll be laughing my ass off. Apparently, uh, unfortunately, one woman was offended by the audacity of the role's name. If there was one person that was offended by the audacity of the role's name, someone needed to step up to her and call her a wambulance and tell her to pull up her big girl panties and frickin' deal. Good Lord. Amy Lame. Um, what, 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 what? From Sadiq Khan's London's Night Czar. Okay. Posted an image of the product on Twitter and said, I never knew sandwiches were gender specific. I'm female, but thankfully Waitrose let me purchase this anyway. Okay. okay. Now maybe, maybe, maybe I'm putting my little sassafras in there and maybe this was a snark. Maybe she was just going, okay, all of you, but <clears throat> Captain Assholios that are having issues with all of this stuff. Maybe she was just poking fun and then they took her cereal. I don't know. Apparently, um, she tagged the organization uh, Everyday Sexism who document uh, instances of sexism experienced on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh, okay. Well, Amy Hun, here I was trying to be nice and say that maybe just maybe you weren't nick or knotted. But then when you had to go and tag the everyday sexism shit. Honey. Honey. Really? Apparently a, a Twitter storm soon followed and Waitrose announced that they were changing the name of the sandwich. And it's no wonder there's a joke about women being in the kitchen. It seems gingerbread men and gentlemen's sandwiches are not welcome there. Obviously not. Wow. Mm. Ladies, 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 please. Take the thong out, okay? Um. Oh, that's true, sweetheart. That is true. Man. <laughs> Um, you know, when I went over to the UK to visit my daughter, and I'm sure I've told you guys this before, but when I went over there, we went to the little pub in the town that Berg, to Blinker, wherever, that they lived, and um, I ordered a cock and bull, which was basically a plate that had steak strips and chicken strips on it. And then my choice of potatoes and another veggie. And I believe it was steamed broccoli. But it was quite tasty, actually. But yes, on the menu, it was cock and bull. And I just, I told everybody, it's like, I got to. I just got it just because of the name, if for nothing else. Just so I could come home and tell everybody I ordered cock and bull while I was in the UK. <laughs> I also had official UK fish and chips at a pub. So, two things that I wanted, well, one thing that I really, really wanted to do while over there, which was not a really big deal, but yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm just now catching up on the chat. Thanks for the advice, Sock Puppet. <laughs> The only problem is, you know, when you have to back up and then, okay, mental image here. <laughs> <laughs>
back up and I would think have to kind of bend over and hold the the drawers out of the way and then you're in the appropriate no I think I'll pass sorry <laughs> Wow. Wow. <sighs> these are these should have been for free for Wackadoodle Wednesday. Cause these people are just plain whacked. But then again, I stop and think it's a freaky ass world when you got these people out there making decisions for the rest of us. And the only reason they're making decisions for the rest of us is because we let them. We really need to stop that, you know? Cause it's like, no. No. Sorry. Just because you're all wanny wanny woo woo doesn't mean the rest of us are going to deal with your shit. Okay? Grow up. Lord. <laughs> Although it is funny to read about them. It's like, oh my God. Are you kidding me? There's people like that out there? Yes, there are. Yes, Virginia. There is an idiot forest and they walk among us. <laughs> Idiots do grow on trees. Or at least it seems like it. Nuts. Every damn one of them. So, let's see. Where else do I want to go? Hmm. How about, how about I go over here to activistpost.com. It's another one that I had stuck in my pocket from the 19th. Apparently, I just didn't get to it the other day. Over one million gun owners refuse to obey ban. No one turns in magazines magazines I don't get magazines I just read shit on the internet I look at magazines when I'm waiting at the dentist office it's one of the few times I'm there early and I wind up sitting there an extra 15 minutes because yeah but if I'm running two seconds late the dentist is like we've been waiting on you never fails never fails okay so apparently in New Jersey Jersey got a lot of criminals there in Jersey um, unless you've been under a rock lately, then you've likely seen the unprecedented push by all levels of government to separate law-abiding Americans from their guns. No, this is not some conspiracy theory. The president himself ushered in a new level of gun control, doing what his liberal predecessor even refused to do by banning bump stocks. Hmm. However... As states across the country seek to limit the ability of innocent people to defend themselves, people are disobeying. In other words, you just wrote a law to create a state full of criminals. That's the way I look at it. In May, Governor Phil Murphy signed into law or signed a law that reduced the maximum capacity of ammunition magazines from 15 rounds to 10. Citizens immediately sued the government citing the unconstitutional nature of the ban, but they failed damn judges what part of shall not be infringed in any case the New Jersey law reasonably fits the state's interest in public safety and does not unconstitutionally burden the Second Amendment's right to self-defense in the home that's what the court wrote in their decision the state's interest in public safety really the so the state is our nanny oh ne never mind grams you've known that for years now, the law also does not violate the Fifth Amendment's take, uh, taking clause because it does not require gun owners to surrender their magazines, but instead allows them to retain modified magazines or register firearms that have magazines that cannot be modified. You know, registration is just asking the government permission to do what you have every right to do. You know that, don't you? Apparently, A.G. Gerber Grewal, wow, what a weird name, G-U-R-B-I-R-G-R-E-W-A-L. Dude, seriously, where are you from? Apparently, they applauded the ruling on a Twitter status saying, This just in, for months, individuals have been challenging New Jersey's limit on large capacity magazines, which is a sensible law to address mass shootings. No, that does not address mass shootings, honey. But today, the Court of Appeals upheld the law. It's a big win for public safety and law enforcement safety. You know, those people that enforce those idiotic laws. It's for their safety. 
because there was a ruling. I saw that earlier today as well. Did not click on the link because it's like, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Where uh, the court said that police officers were not legally bound to protect any children at Parkview. Yeah. Look it up in the Supreme Court. I believe, and I think Flasher has been saying this for years, that, uh, yeah, Supreme Court ruled. they Police officers are not legally bound to protect you. They are law enforcement agents. Period. Period. That's how, when the verbiage changes, you really have to pay attention here because that changes the meaning. Okay, this goes on to say, this month, citizens were given a December 11th deadline on the new ban on standard capacity magazines. The law effectively turned one million law-abiding gun owners into criminals, which is basically all laws, man-made laws do. Let's, let's stipulate. All man-made laws do is create criminals and generate revenue. One way or another, they do either or both at the same time. And that was literally overnight if those people failed to turn in the magazines. Which magazines? You want People? You want uh, Vogue? You want uh, Penthouse? What magazines you guys wanting? I know you're wanting the other magazines, but yeah, you're going to get a single finger salute from me on that. Thank God I don't live in Jersey. Somehow, New Jersey lawmakers thought insane individuals who want to carry out mass shootings would be lining up to turn in their 15-round magazines as anyone caught with one of these banned magazines is now committing a fourth-degree felony. However, even the law-abiding citizens are choosing to disobey, and that's a good thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. According to Amoland.com, uh, they say that they spoke with multiple police departments throughout the state and no one has turned in their magazines. Two sources from within the state police who spoke to Amoland, Amoland on condition of anonymity because, well, you know, I can't be quoted. But yeah, I want, I want you to hear my opinion, but I can't be quoted. They told Amoland News that they both do not know of any magazines turned over to their agency and doubted that any were turned in. <clears throat> Excuse me. They also stated that the state police also engaged the AG's office for guidance on how to respond to inquiries such as ours. They were unaware if the Attorney General has returned their request for guidance. Well, I'm thinking it's pretty much a, here's a big <laughs> to you. Now, all the local police departments that MLN contacted stated that they have not had any magazines turned into them. Amoland, Amoland has filed a Freedom of Information Act request with the New Jersey State Police to get an official count of the number of magazines turned in by New Jersey citizens. And they will update, update this story after the uh, Freedom of Information Act request is fulfilled. Now, this act of disobedience is the only way that law-abiding citizens can effectively and peacefully fight back against the gun grabbers. And so far, it's been effective. Well, just... <sighs> the, uh... What is that? Free thought... The Free Thought Project... <clears throat> Excuse me has reported that we've seen similar acts of disobedience from other states like Illinois. And in Effingham County, Illinois, the town board voted in April to order its employees not to enforce any laws that would unconstitutionally restrict the Second Amendment. Effingham County State's, um, Effingham County State's attorney, Brian Kibler, said that the measure is meant to act as a warning shot to tell the state legislature that the county does not want unnecessary gun control measures or for the sale of firearms to be jeopardized. Yeah, well, we can't hit that pocketbook, can we? 
The uh, resolution states that the right of the people to keep and bear arms is guaranteed as an individual right under the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution and under the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the right of the people to keep and bear arms for defense of life, liberty, and property is regarded as an inalienable right by the people of Effingham County, Illinois. And the people of Effingham County, Illinois derive economic benefit from sale forms of firearm recreation, hunting, and shooting conducted within Effingham County using all types of firearms allowed under the United States Constitution. In other words, they're saying, uh-uh, uh-uh, we don't want to get hit in our pocketbook, so you just back off. I'll bet you if it wasn't hitting them in the pocketbook, they'd say, uh, oh, okay. Now, board member David Campbell told Fox News that the county decided it's time for someone to take a hard stand. Thank you, David. Indeed, as we've noted time and again, rights are preserved and gained when good people make a stand and refuse to obey bad laws. Amen. That is true. You cannot keep a right if you do not exercise it. Just like anything else, if you do not exercise it, whether it's your brain capacity or your muscles or what have you, it will not stay in tip-top form if you do not exercise. So, thank you, Activist Post. Me personally, I have defense things. Um, actually, it really doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot. It's I mean, there are some, but according to responding to Sock Puppet, he says, so pro protect and serve means nothing. Printed on most cop cars sort of makes it common and reasonably expected, which it is reasonably expected, but when it got brought to the Supreme Court, um, the Supreme Court said that they had no, um, they were not mandated. They did not have to because they are law enforcement officers. The definition has changed with the title. George Carlin knew it. He tried to tell us years and years and years ago. So. Okay. I had another sip. Now let me put this over here on the effing site. And then I'm going to move along. Maybe I need to find something a little more fun. A little more lighthearted. Because you know that gingerbread man just really didn't cut it for me. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, wait. I do want to use this one. Yeah. Man. People are just nuts. You know that? They're freaky. It's just kind of freakish how sometimes <clears throat> people are weird. Okay. Myself included. That's how I recognize it. Don't you know? Um... Okay, I think I'm going to go to this one just because I put it in my pocket because I saw the headline and I thought, that looks rather interesting. Let me make sure it's not just a an interview. Oh, quit it. Okay, so, Quillette. This is from Quillette.com. And it was published on December 3rd, by the way. The Unsafe Feminist, Rebecca West and the Bitter Rapture of Truth. Oh, see, now I saw that and I thought, this could be a good thing where I could really, really have fun with this. Or this could be one of those articles where I'm just going to go off the deep end and about halfway through it going to go, I'm done. I'm, I, I can only take so much. So let's find out, shall we? Because all I saw was a headline. So here we go. In an era when indulgent university administrators and professors treat students like spoiled children, one longs for intellectuals who address their audience as adults. Whoa. 
Huh, I like that. The British novelist, biographer, literary critic, travel writer, and political common, uh, commentator Rebecca West from 1892 to 1983 is the tonic we need. So, like other great authors of the 20th century, including George Orwell and Doris Lessing, West never received a university education. See, she didn't let an education get in the way of her learning. And that may help explain why her intellectual nonconformism and free-willing spirit. Oh, I think I'm going to like this one. I hope I am. Now, West, West brushed against orthodoxy like barbed wire against chiffon. She was a suffragist who rejected pacifism in the First World War and the Second, a leftist who fought communism, an internationalist who spoke up for small nations, an individualist who valued authority and tradition, and West never crouched in one position. She was unflinchingly realistic. Human conflict, she said, is inescapable. Gotta agree with her there. It is as much a feature of the art as it is of states. Eros, too, creates antagonism, for sex is dangerous. Yet human cooperation is ubiquitous. Women and men need each other, and can and do love each other. A feminism that treats women as if they were vulnerable children and that blames a man for a woman's own irresponsibility was seen by West as absurd. Now, needless to say, her attitude to life is as far from the nursery school feminism of today's university, which is smothering, alarmist, bureaucratic, as it is possible to be. <clears throat> yeah, it is. Now, freedom carries obligations. West believed the first of which is to grow up. I believe in liberty. She declared in 1952 Credo, and particularly the liberty of a person to be able to say or do what he wishes and what is within his power. Because every individual is unique, each person must know some things which are known to nobody else. The transmission of such knowledge, which could not be learned from any other source, requires a space in which people are able to speak their minds. Now, the contrast between a state of innocence and a mature comprehension of life's intractable demands, or the hard task of being adult, as she put it in her 1931 book, Ending in Earnest, is central to Rebecca West's philosophy. We do not expect children to be active in politics. We protect children from politics. Nor do we consider adults who behave like children to be competent human agents. Maturity is the sin qua non of liberty because a pluralist society, unlike an authoritarian one, <clears throat> excuse me, requires actors of independent mind who can draw a distinction between their civic responsibilities and private sentiments, who are sufficiently restrained to care for the world even if they pursue their own pleasures, and who are willing to take on onerous public burdens. Like great art, the liberal pursuit of freedom demands intelligence and discernment, a readiness to test the veracity of fantasies that all of us labor or harbor to some degree and to ev evaluate their importance in the light of intellect. Okay, this is really, really, really highfalutin talking here. But, ba yeah. Basically, she's saying that, yeah, adulting is hard, but you need to be able to have carry on an adult conversation if you wish to have a valuable society and to be a member of society that people don't want to just always punch in the face. <laughs> okay, I'm taking a little creative license with that, but... <clears throat> to go on, she says, maturity is evidenced, in short, where individuals embrace the bitter rapture which attends the discovery of any truth, and where they would rather be dis, uh, disconsolate in 
communion with reality than con comforted by orthodoxy. Now, West thesis is reminiscent of German social scientist Max Weber's belief that a politics of responsibility requires realistic passion. What marks a mature person, Weber wrote in Politics as a Vocation in 1919, is an attitude of principled realism enabling one to bear the perversity of the world without succumbing to cynicism. Wow. Now, the threat of regression to a childlike state has a recurring topic in West's work. We see its first appearance in her novel, um, her 1918 novel, The Return of the Soldier, which centered on the shell-shocked infantryman's retreat into bygone comforts at the expense of those around him. Infantilism is a more apt term for immaturity here because it implies not just a lack of emotional development, but a stubborn longing to remain childlike or return to a childlike state. While immaturity is merely pathetic, infantilism is twisted. During West's lifetime, it encompassed several distinct forms. Now, the first was a male mode of dependency brought about by economic ruin. Mass unemployment during the Depression years pushed many families to the edge of destitution, but some were fortunate to contain women, wives, and mothers whose talents equipped them to work in industries less affected by the general collapse. That's a situation that some may recognize in today's economy. And that's reason alone would suggest that men fortunate to live with provident women would have cause to be happy but many such men were not happy at all. Some fell into infantilism and wanted to remain in a permanent state of dependence. Others formed a deep feeling of resentment against their wives, which was sometimes so intense that it led to divorce. Where a man loses his sense of virility, he will either renounce it forever and regress to the state of a child, or he will affirm virility in a twisted form and insist that men are harmed when their superiority over women is impaired. Kind of twisted, don't you think? Now, if the first form of infantilism postulated by West is reactive, being occasioned by economic breakdown, the second form is uh, purposive, purposive, Okay, which is a deliber deliberate antinomian and transgressive assault on moral decency. Oh, now this phenomenon was epitomized by novelist André uh, Gide, or Gide, author of such works as Isabel, The Im um, Immoralist, and The Counterfeiters, and Gide's contempt for women deemed the cause of much of men's wretchedness and his interest in violent children reflects the displacement of an infantile neurosis by which pleasure and joy are conceived as objects of guilt. And if women bring pleasure, they must be hateful. West construes this unspoken connection as the root of Geet's homosexuality. Ah. Now, his infantilism reveals itself in a morbid attraction to cruelty, as in uh, Les Caves du Vatican, and in which the hero brutalizes an old man on a train for no real reason. Now, Dostoevsky also dwelled on such depravity, but whereas the Russian moralists saw it as a troubling form of modern behavior, Gide lux luxuriated in its nihilism. Such glee, West says, reflects the child's sense that in making this discovery it is breaking a command laid in or laid on it by an adult world. This was but a component of Gide's larger cachet of literary circles, which was based on his expression of the deep-seated desire to stay infantile instead of becoming an adult. Now, by West's analysis, this is not only perverse, it's also sinister. Um, as, 
by which uh, Gide would say he'd lick his lips. And it's a very uh, converse of goodness, which must be stable since it's response to the fundamental needs of mankind, which themselves are stable. Wow. Now, as an act of rebellion against the adult world, l'acte gratuit, I'm sure I said that wrong, has one evident limit. The gratification of such impulses must be haphazard because each individual will find cruelty enjoyable in his own way. There are some sick fucks out there. There's that F-bomb for you. So for rebellion to become a collective act, it must be animated by something more than idiosyncratic forms of lashing out. It needs an ideology and a cohesive justification for rebellion. Now, among Western intellectuals, yeah, they call themselves, communism provides that cohesive justification. West's theory about communism's allure to the Western literate is too large a topic to be examined here in detail, but she traces one element of communism to the dissatisfaction felt by children towards their parents. Yeah, that's why a lot of times when I see this crap going on, it's like it's a bunch of petulant three-year-olds having a little pissy fit. Now, West found a useful case study in Britain where communism took root within the Socialist uh, Gradualism Society of Sidney and Beatrice Webb, the Fabian Society they championed, the London School of Economics, which is Fabianism's intellectual nerve center, and the the debunking satire of, among others, H.G. Wells and George Bernard Shaw. Now, this group aimed at social improvement and the betterment of the working class. Its message appealed to civil servants, teachers, doctors, and lawyers who sought to reform local governments along democratic socialist lines. Upgrade working standards, improve housing, education, and the prison system. Huh, imagine, education and prison system, all in that one little section there. And... In tandem with the trade union movement, provide British workers with a decent standard of living. So you can keep up with the Joneses and become a really good consumerist. I threw that in there. Now, West's appraisal of the Fabian movement is double-edged. Fabian policies often struck her as sensible, humane, overdue, and especially in regard to local government and penal policy, effective such as the National Health Service established in 1948, is due in no small part to earlier Fabian efforts. But, as Fabianism evolved, its authoritarian and bureaucratic overtones became more evident. The Webbs, in particular, were early youth uh, enthusiasts of Bolshevism. Oh, great. And the circle they assembled around them, being well-off and well-known, produced a sort of aristocratic socialism that was corrosive of all authority besides its own. Now, Fabian children received an education in contempt, as West observed in 1945 article Time and Tide. The foundation of their Fabian parents' creed was the assumption that there was nothing in the existing structure of society which did deserve to be or did not deserve to be raised to the ground and that all would be well if it were replaced by something as different as possible. That's their, that Hopi McChange shit there. In case you thought Dangleberry invented it. No, <laughs> Dangleberry didn't invent nothing. And, let's see. Uh, They were to do it quietly, of course, but the replacement was to be absolute. To them, the past was of value only so far as it gave indications of how to annul the present and create a future which had no relation to it. So in volumes lying around the house of the privileged socialist set, The values of our British traditional culture made their last stand and bled and died, all except altruism and truthfulness and austerity. 
on which Bernard Shaw and his close associates claimed a monopoly. Now, the idea of loyalty to the crown or of fighting for one's country was laughable to those aristocratic intellectuals because Britain was, after all, a ridiculous country when it was not simply malignant. West would be appalled, but not particularly surprised, at the current predilection among intellectuals to expand that um, antipathy to Western civilization in general. So, I keep seeing flashes, but this ice chat doesn't let me know when. Yes, that's right, Java Doctor, it is a cookbook. I'm just checking. So, now, uh, afforded ample material comfort and expensive education, West noted that the offspring of these celebrity socialists rebelled in a curiously conformist way. They had been taught to be dissenters, and so they would remain. They had been taught to enjoy being in opposition as distinct from being in power, and nothing is easier than being in opposition. West wrote in The New Meaning of Treason in 1964. Yeah. But as the welfare state vision of their parents became a reality, the fantasy of opposition became more difficult to sustain. And the election of the Labour Party to government in, Brit in British general election in 1945 meant that reformist socialists now had the means to put forward a socialist program of mass industrial nationalization. So if rebellion was to continue, it must find a new vehicle where the glorious drunkenness of permanent opposition could continue. And the children found this intoxication in communism, which West described as a haven to the infantilist. Because it exists both in and outside of government simultaneously. The Soviet Union was a state that opposed the state in which the younger generation lived. Communism enabled a loyal disloyalty, a rejection of one's own country while affirming obedience to another that is far more radical. Uh, the make-believe to which communists subscribe was that the Soviet Union portended a world of peace, plenty, and justice even as its leaders liquidated millions and revealed themselves willing to form a pact of convenience with Nazi Germany. Moreover, the Communism Club was not without its privileges, and this was an important factor for the group fearful of becoming déclassé and unable to repeat the material success of its parents. Soviet communism best, uh, bestowed esteem on visiting scientists. It feted foreign tourists and commentators, and it showered honors on those who spied for the proletariate. In short, communist intellectuals were men and women resolved to trump their parents' radicalism, where it had become all too conventional, while also creating a new self-serving moral hierarchy soldered to a collective cause. Well, isn't that just lovely? Now, the ex-communist Whitaker Chambers quipped that Rebecca West was a socialist by habit of mind and a conservative by self-structure. He forgot to mention her feminism and her liberalism. In any event, political um, mixtures are common in, min or in many fine minds, as Alexis... De Tocqueville, who is a conservative, or um, so w uh, was Alexis de Tocqueville, a conservative or a liberal. He was both and more, depending on the matter at hand. Alexander Pope, confirming his own political latitude, joked that Tories call me a Whig and Whigs a Tory. And Pope's friend and confidant, Jonathan Swift, was equally hard to peg prompting George Orwell in Politics versus Literature, to dub him a Tory anarchist, despising authority while disbelieving in liberty, and preserving the aristocratic outlook while seeing clearly that the existing aristocracy is degenerate and contemptible. 
I have, I have a hard time disagreeing with that one. So, a writer who draws on multiple traditions can never sink into the dogmas of any one of them. Really? Or indulge in their extremes. Really? But while West's politi or politics are multi-form, her liberalism stands out today as her most admirable quality. This is not just because those committed to free expression must keep speaking to and against those who would hear only one voice, and because today's most popular forms of feminist expression promote censorship and victimhood. West's liberalism also feels morally urgent because liberals are engaged in an ongoing fight with themselves. Yeah, the war on the outside is the war that's going on on the inside. So in that fight, the priority should not be compassion or conciliation, but truthfulness. As West observed, it is never possible to serve the interests of liberalism by believing that which is false to be true. The fact-finding powers of liberals have therefore always to be at work. Now infantilism goes along with illiberalism because while a liberal society requires a baseline <clears throat> excuse me of human freedom and responsibility the infantilized citizen is dependent on a person group or identity one need look no further than our colleges and grievance saturated social media to see how this works the basic cause of such malaise may lie more in ideology than psychology, but the psychological consequences are plain enough. Rebecca West remarked that Freud gave sadists a new weapon by enabling them to disguise themselves as children. Social media adds uh, masochism to the mix as when some reckless um, accusation tempts the unfortunate target to engage in self-abasement. Yet, the accused have responsibilities too, and unthinking contrition is its own kind of infantilism. Those unwilling to defend their opinions, and who self-flagellate in public on the basis of non-existent crimes, invite their tormentors to apply an extra dose of humiliation. The invitation is rarely declined. In other words, when somebody cries, wah, someone else goes, oh, 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 I'm sorry. Even though they're not, they go forth and apologize. Stop doing that. Stop bending over backwards to these people that have an emotional boo-boo. If you are going to give me control over your emotions, you are one sad individual. To say that I have the ability to hurt your feelings, they're your feelings. Do they control you or do you control them? If I control them, you're in sorry shape. So, in conclusion with this and I know this is a very he's he used very intellectual lingo in this so I'm sure I'm gonna have to reread I mean I got the gist but I'm sure those that listen are going what the fuck she talking about um in conclusion on this if we have no right to be con uh, comforted as adults we can still take comfort in exemplars of independence and individuality Rebecca West is not as well known as many other great writers in the 20th century but perhaps that will change in an era when infantilism and ideology are renewing their assault on that bitter rapture called the truth. In other words, yeah, she was all about taking down that cognitive dissonance. That's what I'm thinking. I know, rather long-winded, rather intellectual lingo, lingo, but read it for yourself again, and yeah... You'll get the gist. Basically, it's saying y'all are shooting yourself in the foot. So. Uh, hootie doody waddy. Who's doing what? And yes, goober, people are self-destructive. I do have to agree with that. 
and it's sad because you know that every day you get to wake up that's a gift Dude, seriously, you get a gift every day. And right now is a present because you're in the present. Unless you dwell in the past, but you're still, or if your mind and your memories or your feelings are dwelling in the past, you're still in the present. You have consequences in the present. Everything's a gift. But I'm not going to give you respect if you don't deserve it. I'm not going to give you a trophy just because you participated. Just not. And I'm not going to give you an apology if I ain't sorry. Pretty much the way it works. Okay. Let me go check out Twitter again because I see I got some notifications. Luis Gutierrez. Oh, Trump would have killed Jesus. Mm. Sorry, Louise. There we go. Ocasio-Cortez. Yeah, in the year 2025, and President Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez orders the wall to be torn down at the cost quadrupling what it took to build, which was also over budget because government. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you keep the government out of it, costs will stay down. Seriously. And as for this whole health care debacle shit that's going on, tell you what, let people be able to purchase their health care from companies that are outside of the, the state that they live in. And make the insurance companies compete for your dollars instead of giving them a carte blanche like Ob Obamacare death care did. Oh, well, it doesn't go into effect until 2017, but every year you can increase your rates and cut the deductible and say it's in a preparation for Obamacare. That's pretty much what they did. Aye. People, people, people. So. Okay. I think I'm going to go check out the pig because I've dropped a couple of F-bombs already. <laughs> it's time for me to go to the pig and chillax. Chillax. See what's going on over here. Hey, Hambo and Porcus, it is December 21st. And their word of the day is TDD. It is a Hamboism. It's believed to be caused by the re uh, reduced density of the epidermis. Oh, here we go. TDD or Tolerance Deficiency Disorder. I, I swear to God the universe does this to me. Um, it's a condition commonly associated with jihad akazis and foaming at the mouth progtards. It makes the afflicted lose all self-control and the ensuing tantrum makes them attack anything and anyone in sight because everything offends their sensibilities. Can you say Antifa as well? In the quotable quotes section, I am greatly under misunderstood by politically correct idiots. That was Brigitte Bardot. Hey, Brigitte. Um, oh, good God. In their tasty tidbits section, Women's College in Massachusetts rejects female symbol for being offensive. Really? The college cannot move forward with a word mark that resembles this symbol. The problem here is that some students and alums don't identify as women. F <sighs> wow. Cupcake, just because you don't identify as something doesn't mean the rest of society needs to pander to you. Now, the Daily Wire reports that gender-diverse women's college won't use female gender symbol because it's offensive. It's a frickin' women's college. Excuse me, talk about sexist right off the bat. Now, an, a Massachusetts all-women's college found, it, found out the hard way that any attempt to include anything relating to gender or sex will be met with scorn in today's society. 
Mount Holyoke College, or MHC, officials tried to commission a new logo for the school that included the initials MHC sideways so that the H and the C formed the female gender symbol, known as the Venus symbol. This angered students and alumni who didn't identify as women, and the school was forced to apologize and withdraw the logo design. Excuse me, but if this is an all-women's college and you don't identify as a woman, what the hell are you doing going to that college? And what the hell is the school doing allowing you to go to that college if it truly is an all-women's college? Holy crap and holy, the freaking insanity of this world is making my... Huh, I don't have a tumor to bleed flash, but holy crap and holy. The knicker knot is strong in the world today. Mm. Apparently this past Thursday, we had the occasion to solicit feedback on the design firm's uh, identity work from a group of students. We listened to feedback regarding the use of the Venus symbol as an option for the brand identity and logo as proposed by the consultants. It is now evident to us that this symbol has a long history of exclusion connected to the movements that, while trailblazing for some groups, represents an erasure of others. Uh, excuse me, you're an all-women's college. Can you say sexist? Can you say genderist? Can you say frickin' nanny knickernauts? Or thong knots in this case. Honey, when you pull your thong down, the noise from that, that's that noise that people keep hearing. You know, it's its not really a tearing sound. It's more of a... <laughs> that's got to be where it's coming from. We got so damn many people with knots in their thongs and knots in their knickers that they're making that moaning noise every time they pull their drawers down to go to the bathroom. It's got to be what's making that noise. Holy shit. <sighs> we have thus determined that the college cannot move forward with a word mark that references this symbol as we think how we will distinguish Mount Holyoke College. While it is always disappointing to realize that our creative work has not achieved its goal, it is deeply upsetting to realize that the work is seen as offensive and damaging. You are a freaking all women's college if you've got people going to school there who do not identify as female why are they going to your school if you are an all women's college god bless oh breathe Whew. Man, it's no wonder that, you know, NASA did see something in the telescope. Looks suspiciously like an Earth-sized hand basket, and it's headed our way, and I think it's going to cart us clean into the sun. Wow. Wow. Oh, I would love to, uh, yeah. They still have the tech support on here. I'll have to read that later to get my head out of all of this stupidness. Huh, they also have pagan enlightenment. Let's check this out because I really need to... Wow. One day, while traversing a store's parking lot, a dude pulled up beside me in his pickup truck, rolled down his window, and struck up a conversation. Uh, him basically said, what does it mean? And me, I said, are you asking for a Clinton-esque parsing of the word it? And him laughing said, I'm talking about the words on the back of your sweatshirt. What does Orthodox pagan mean? To which he responded, not as much as it used to. The nanny state gets very disagreeable about virgin sacrifices as if anyone has seen one of those in recent memory. We do, however, accept virtual virgins for our virtual sacrifice. That's a wench who wears or who swears she only did it once but insists she didn't enjoy it. To which the guy in the pickup laughed again and said, No, what I really need to know is what's a pagan? To which I res or to which the other person responds, according to the word wranglers, it's a heathen, a person who is not a cross cultist, a Torah true believer, or a mechamaniac. 
to which the guy in the truck says, Anne, that's what you are, to which the gentleman with the sweatshirt says, well, it's something like that. I have made a careful, reasoned decision to reject all forms of supernaturalism, political, cultural, and theological. To which he responds, well, he then works for me. And this guy responds, well, cool, have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> to which the guy in the truck says, uh, but I thought, and this guy responded, yeah, I know, never judge a book by its cover, or a sovereign individual by his orthodox pagan shirt. Bestowing a light enlightenment still rocks my world. I'm thinking that's something. I'll bet you Hambo did that. I'll bet you that's a Hambo thing right there, because that sounds like something Hambo would do. Okay, this date in history, the 21st of December, 1911. Arguably one of the greatest baseball players who ever picked up the bat, Josh Moore, then 800 career home runs Gibson, emerges from the womb taking practice swings. Oh, this date in history, the 21st of December, 1913. World's first crossword puzzle is printed in the New York world. And finally, this date in history, the 21st of December, 1915, when Glendora, Oregon gets a record-shattering 10.17 inches of rainfall, Messiah Al Gore channels his inner Noah and starts gathering critters two by two. Two by two by two. Who's going to clean up all this poo? That's what I want to know. What was that? Um. What? Who's getting what done? I come in peace. I didn't bring artillery. But I'm pleading with you with tears in my eyes. Oh. If you fuck with me, I'll kill y'all. Oh, I like that, Chloe. That's funny. <laughs> That's from Mad Dog Mattis? Cool. Okay. Um, that's right, Grim. 98.36% of all statistics are made up. Did you know that um, according to... Okay, this is old statistics, but according to the uh, National Highway Safety Commission or agency, or whatever the hell it is, 23% of all vehicular accidents are caused by drunk drivers. 23%. Which means that 77% are caused by sober people. All you gotta do is just reverse it. Look at it from another angle and wow! Yeah, that'll blow your mind, won't it? Oh, well, come on over to PIGazette.com. Say hey to Hambo and Porkus. Tell them Grammy sent you, and I'm sure they'll go, Damn, that old broad's still doing the radio? Shit. Y'all haven't pulled the plug on her yet? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I have some other stuff over here. You know what? I think I'll go to this. This is from worldtruth.tv. And, well, no, maybe I won't go to it because it's from a year ago. It was Apple execs now facing jail time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it would be funny, but, eh, it's from a year ago. Uh, if they went to the Gray Bar Hilton Fed, yeah, Club Fed, that's what they call it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is from blogscientificamerican.com. I gotta check this shit out. Um, wait, maybe the hippies weren't right? What? So apparently a recent proposal about consciousness is fascinating, but it's not science. Wait a minute. Oh, that was it was a blog that was published in Scientific American, which provocatively declares that hippies were right. It's all about vibrations, man. Where Hunt claims that consciousness emerges from resonant effects found in nature at a wide range of scales. And this is reminiscent of arguments that have been made since the development of the science of thermodynamics more than 200 years ago. In brief, very intriguing and surprising characteristics of complex systems have been discovered and rigorous, rigorously defined with such tantalizing terms as emergence and resonance and self-organization. 
And, well, these kind of features of the natural world are so amazing, even uncanny, that they have inspired wild speculation as to their possible implications. So are there deep connections between this phenomena and a more mysterious aspects of our existence, such as life, consciousness, and intelligence? Might they even provide us with insight <coughs> Excuse me. into possible answers to expensively fundamental questions like why there is something rather than nothing? Well, because if there was nothing, you wouldn't know it because there'd be nothing. And you would be nothing, which would mean you wouldn't know it because you're nothing. But since there's, since there's something, you know what something is. But do you really know what nothing is? Because since we got something, how can you have nothing if, there, if there's something everywhere? <laughs> Riddle me that one, Batman. Okay, so <laughs> to go on with this. Speculating on such mysteries is an understandable pastime. And diverse thinkers from physicists to philosophers and psychologists to theologians have written libraries worth of treatises attempting to shed light on the possible answers of these deep questions. Along the way, ideas inspired by scientific results have had varying degrees of success. <coughs> Excuse me. Concepts such as animal magnetism, vitalism, synchronicity, and quantum mysticism all had their day in the sun, only to end up debunked or dismissed by skeptics and scientists who either pointed out a lack of imperial, empirical data supporting the claims, or showed that the ideas were incompatible with what we have discovered about the natural world. But what about those things you haven't discovered yet? Maybe they are, dis they are compatible with those things you have not discovered. Eh? Did you think of that? Now, in light of history, this author wrote Hans, uh, Hunt's piece and the paper he published in the Journal of Conscience, Consciousness Studies, and Hunt offers a re-imaging of panapskism, whatever the hell that is. Okay, apparently it's an idea with a storied history, but largely without evidence for or against it. So while Hunt's descriptions of natural phenomena appear largely correct, what I did not see was a convincing connection of these phenomena to a testable scientific framework for explaining the existence of consciousness. Maybe there are some things that your scientism just flat ass can't explain. Maybe you need to learn to say, I don't know. I say that a lot, because there's a lot of shit I don't know. What shit do I not know? If I knew what shit I didn't know, then I would know it, and therefore it wouldn't be something that I did not know. Kind of a circular logic thing, but, eh, you know, they use all kind of weird logic anyway these days. Article goes on to say, rather, I think his presentation is more or less a list of concepts that he believes are consistent with panapsis. Schism, whatever that is. Pe yeah. But why should this idea be more reasonable proposal than any other? Is there a way to show Hunt's idea is correct? And, for example, the idea that consciousness is an illusion is incorrect? Well, if it's an illusion, then we're all on one hell of a ride. Now, historically, Scientific American has been dedicated to reporting methodolo methodologically, methodologically, how in the hell? Where do you put the emphasis in that word? <laughs> <laughs> well, they do careful investigations. But in areas where mysteries remain, I can understand that a bit more fanciful speculation may be permitted. Nevertheless, it is important that novel ideas are presented in a way that subjects them to critique. Criticize all you want. So, in my Life in the Universe class at LaGuardia Community College, <laughs> alrighty, the students and I spend time evaluating claims about reality according to the rough um, heuristics, what? 
of Carl Sagan that he outlined in his book, The Demon Haunted World. Now, in this work, Sagan proposes that we all maintain a baloney detection kit. Oh, I call it a BS detector, but if you want to call it baloney, that's fine. With tools meant to help us evaluate whether claims are likely to be correct or incorrect. And one of the things Sagan asks us to consider is whether what is being presented is a falsifiable hypothesis. Oh, there's a lot of those out there. There's a lot of those out there. Now, by my reckoning, Hunt's proposal fails minimally, or, yeah, fails minimally this test. In fact, in his journal article, Hunt sees, even seems to acknowledge this. There's no proof possible regarding my proposed framework, but science probes it does not prove, or, but science probes it does not prove. Okay, and we must, each of us, proceed instead of on available evidence in inference and aesthetics. Well, hmm, okay, whatever. It is indeed true that there is never proof in science in the sense that there may be in formal logic or mathematics, but crucially, there is disproof. I submit that Hunt's idea in an expansive formulation does not prove any means for us to discover that it is incorrect. Okay, so you can't, if you can't prove it incorrect, so it is instead an example of, okay, whatever, that's Latin, which is basically a claim that it's, is presented as self-evidently true and unfalsifiable, and because of this, it crosses over from a scientific claim into one that is something else. Well, maybe he's not trying to prove it scientifically, Mr. Scientism dude. So by avoiding dis demonstrable or measurable predictions, Hans ha Hunt has an idea that cannot be evaluated in scientific terms. Okay, consciousness really isn't something that I would think you would be able to prove or disprove scientific term-wise. Just putting that out there, hun. So, this has the effect of avoiding the risk that it might be subject to some kind of critiques that have been leveled against other strained speculations about consciousness. For example... Roger Penrose and Stuart Hameroff propose that consciousness arises from quantum mechanical coherence effects in neurons, a claim that, at least in its simplest form, Mar or Max Tegmark showed was falsified by rapid quantum de decoherence that would occur in the relatively high temperature environment of the brain. You guys are really trying to justify your existence way out there, aren't you? Oh, well, he concludes that as a scientific proposal, at least Penrose and Hameroff had an idea that has commendable attri attribute that it was falsifiable in principle. In contrast, Hunt's proposal is simply unfalsifiable. It may be an attractive description for some, but it does not provide any means for us to evaluate whether it is true. Possibly because there is no means to evaluate whether it's true or not because it's a totally individual thing. So maybe, just maybe, the hippies were right. You just beg to differ. Maybe that's what it is, Mr. Joshua Tan, over here on Observations in Scientific American. I beg to differ with you. Uh, actually, I don't beg. I, I have a differing opinion from yours. Oh, well. So, to establish the truth or validity of by presentation of argument or evidence. See, it says argument or evidence. Repeatable experiments over and over. Yeah. Um... Let's see. Yeah, that's a good one, Grim. Reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. And actually, Goober, uh, that 90% of material via quantum physics, that's not empty space, that's the ether. That the uh, 
something Morley. Um, oh man, I can't think of the first name. Scripps Morley, is that what it was? No, that's not right. Um, it's an experiment that was carried out that proved that the ether, proved the ether, but they did not want to touch that. So, oh well. Mr. Joshua isn't a fan of Christmas. He isn't? Well, oh well. Guess what? Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 10. Also on the uh, RLM Spreaker channel, the RLM TuneIn radio station, lots of other RLM and num 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 places. It will also, here in just a wee bit, be on the RLM YouTube channel, the RLM BitChute channel, and the iHeart station. And that's if I get my defecation compacted in a nice little bundle and do my blog quickly. <laughs> I figured I'm touching on some highfalutin articles. I may as well really use some highfalutin lingo, don't you think? Hey, I know it's a little bit early, but I do have a little bit of time left, but I don't want to miss out on anybody. So um, be sure to stick around because later on this evening, Grimner and Moose Girl will be on for the uh, Yuletide Freakers Ball or the Bah Humbug Freakers Ball, however you wish to put that. Um, also, tomorrow at noon Eastern Time, Flasher Rooney Dork is going to be on with the Dork Table. Wish I could listen in, but I will be at Woik. At Woik. Uh, Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimmy's going to be kicking off some blues here on RLM Radio, and I'm sure there will be a rousing game of... Um, trivia going on in the chit chat to which I will be able to observe but I very rarely get anything I'm usually about halfway into typing the answer when someone else and it goes good answer and I go in backspace <laughs> oh well directly following Grimner will be Hal Anthony who's going to open up a can of whoop ass on yo ass behind the woodshed on Monday, is it Monday or is it Tuesday? Okay, Monday, Monday, Grimmy, is that your leftovers? See, I need to do just a minute. You know what? I just need to do this. Damn it. I need to go here. And then I, because I have the World Truth Radio schedule, but obviously that is the wrong one because it's got some really, really old shows. So, um, there we go. Pop-up schedule. We'll just do that one. So, no, nah, Tuesday, there ain't, ain't nothing on, oh yeah, there is. Grimm's Leftovers at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Grimm's Leftovers on Monday. And I've been able to listen to that a couple of times, or at least part of it. And yay, Grimm, I enjoy it. Then on Tuesday... At 1 p.m. Eastern Time. In a perfect world with Flash and Vinny. Yeehaw. Um, let's see. And then I will not be back next week Wednesday. That's the day after Christmas. I'm taking the day. Taking a holiday. Got things going on. Unless it blizzards. And then, I'm, then I'll just be doing like around the house. But because they are projecting snow. So, I don't know. It depends. Depends on if I travel or not. So, um, but I will be back next week, Friday, for the Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. Um, until then, you know what? It is the season. Tis Christmas time. And whether they stole it from some pagan, whether it's some mind control thing, you know, this whole thing of, you know, it's supposed to be the season for giving. Well, guess what? You spend your time with people, you're giving of yourself to them. And uh, if, if people voluntarily spend their time with you, then they are giving you the gift of their company. So thank them for that. That really is what it should be all about. It shouldn't be about... Um, um, oh, and Grimmy says he may skip... Oh, and yeah, and I'll bet you... Yeah, because next week, Tuesday, is Christmas. Grimmy says that he may skip Monday being Xmas Eve and all. And who wants to hear that kind of shit? <laughs> I don't know. I'll be working Christmas Eve and Christmas Day because people with little ones want to be able to stay home. Um, let's see. And yeah, I don't know if Flasher will be on on Tuesday or not. 
because Tuesday's Christmas. See, I'm just... There you go. Tis the season for me to be wackadoodly and freaky and all that other fun stuff. Not many ghost dances with hippies. Uh, you know what? I like being called a hippie. And I don't mind being called a conservative. And when my brother called me a conservative hippie, he said, you're the first one I've ever met. And I said, hey, hippies conserve water. They shower with a friend. <laughs> so there you go. In any case, y'all have a uh, absolutely amazing weekend. I'm going to be working over the weekend or having family. So have an absolutely amazing weekend. Have an absolutely awesome Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Whether you celebrate them or not, I hope they are still joyful days for you. You know, because guess what? If you wake up, you were gifted with another day. So enjoy that present while you can, because there's an awful lot of people in this world that don't get it. So, until the Friday after Christmas, y'all behave yourself. Because Santa Claus is watching you. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. And remember, oh, Flash said he would be on on Christmas. Okay, so there will be a Flasher Rooney dork in a perfect world on Christmas. Yay, Flasher. Once again, I'll be working so I won't be home to hear it. Damn it. Oh, well. Y'all remember, I really do love you all. I really, really honestly do. And if you get a lump of coal in your stocking you know i've seen videos where you can compress it down and make your own diamond <laughs> lump of coal's not necessarily a bad thing and if everything goes to shit guess what you can burn it crush it up burn it whatever heat your house so and for christmas i hope you get just enough not too much just enough but until we meet again in the funny papers I will see y'all later, and I love ya. Good night.